Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. Nathan sent me a story involving some misbehavior in a courtroom. And of course, these days, courtrooms are virtual. And so sometimes people are actually in court when they're at home and elsewhere. And that creates problems with your mindset. And it's true that if you're an attorney and you walk into a courtroom, generally speaking, you put yourself in a totally different mindset because you are in a different place than your office or your home or a restaurant. And so you shift gears and you put yourself into this mindset where you are going to be on your best behavior, you're respectful, you're careful what you say, even if you're talking quietly. And uh, you, you, it, it's, a, it's a total you know, total change of attitude. So here's the problem from WDRB.com uh, out of Kentucky. Uh, judge charges attorney with contempt after a comment made a courtroom gasp. <laughs> Sounds almost like a Daily Mail headline, but hang in there. Louisville, Kentucky, overcome by shock and astonishment. Court attendees raised their hands to cover their open mouths Tuesday as district court judge ruled that the Louisville defense attorney was in direct criminal contempt after an unusual dispute in a virtual session of court. And so again, if you're sitting at home in front of the camera, you have to think, I'm not at home, I'm in that courtroom. I'm in front of a judge, I'm in that courtroom. In the hearing, the parties were set to approve a plea deal for a defendant in a misdemeanor criminal mischief case. So we're not talking about a big case here. Criminal mischief, down there, more serious crimes are up here. And as the deal was being discussed, the defendant expressed confusion. So the attorney said that her client was mentally ill. So the judge then said, it is fine that he has mental illness, but that doesn't mean that we can go through with a plea if he doesn't understand what he is agreeing to. And that's generally the case. A person's got to understand and knowingly enter into a plea agreement. And if they have a mental illness, that might be a problem. So the defendant then told the court that he was not mentally ill. So then the attorney asked the judge to be withdrawn from the case, no longer wanted to be this man's attorney. So the judge said, no, ma'am, the motion is denied. And then the attorney answered back and said, why? He won't accept the plea. And she continued speaking over the judge and explained that the man has caused multiple problems at the uh, Department of Corrections and wouldn't accept her legal advice. So the judge then said, you are now disparaging your client to this court. So the attorney then asked again to be withdrawn as counsel and the judge denied it. And then the attorney said, I bet I don't appear again and hung up. (laughs) That's what it says here. Hanging up her phone and disconnecting the virtual hearing with a final goodbye. Goodbye. So to say I don't appear again, you have to understand that an appearance in court doesn't mean the same thing that the common language meaning of the word appearance is. So something appears here. It disappears, that kind of thing. No, an appearance is a legal concept. So someone who's an attorney appears on behalf of somebody else, they file what's called an appearance. So the fact that an attorney doesn't come to court doesn't mean they're not appearing for their client. So the idea that I don't appear again merely means I won't attend court again. The appearance is still on the record indicating that she is attorney of counsel, which means that her appearance is still good. Um... The judge then said, I would like to make a contempt motion for this attorney. Later in the day, the attorney joined the virtual courtroom again to ask the judge for clarification about the contempt order. Clarification. (laughs) She then told the judge, mark my words, if you take adverse action against me, you better be sure about it because you made some mistakes here today. I will attempt to hold you civilly or however responsible I can, and that's my word. (laughs) That's generally not good to threaten a judge in their courtroom. Uh, In the contempt order obtained by WDRB News on Tuesday, the um, judge did, in fact, remove the attorney uh, from the case and stated that her behavior in the hearing embarrassed the court. The contempt charge carries a $500 fine 
and a 90-day prison sentence. However, that 90-day prison sentence can be avoided if the attorney agrees to refrain from committing additional acts of contempt and studies courtroom professional standards. In a phone interview, the attorney said she'll challenge the punishment, citing the judge's rudeness and disrespect for her off-the-cuff remark. Uh, The attorney contends she is fighting for what's best for her client, but the problem, of course, is that there's no such thing as an off-the-cuff remark when you're on the record. Off the cuff, I understand what that means, but when you're in court, you're on the record. So everything you say is being recorded for posterity. And in case you're curious, we now know exactly what was said word for word because it was on the record. I bet I don't appear again. Goodbye. And of course, part of that problem there is just simply the hanging up. Because generally speaking, and again, I know many of you are familiar with courtroom procedure uh, that you've seen on TV, but that often is edited in the way that leaves some of the stuff out. And some of you may have been in court, but you may not have paid attention to this stuff. But generally speaking, when you go into a courtroom, starting from the moment you walk through the back doors, let's let's start with a whole procedure of one hearing, okay? So I show up at a court, I find my client, talk to them for a few minutes, we then go into the courtroom. Let's assume the judge is not on the bench. We go into the courtroom, we sit down back in the gallery where everyone sits. A few minutes, bailiff comes out, says everybody rise, judge walks in, they often make an announcement, and then the judge will sit down and say, be seated, everyone will sit down, and then they'll call the first case. And someone will then call out a case and say, uh, Johnson versus Smith, and if I represent one of those parties, I'll stand up and go, ready, your honor, and my client will come with me, and we'll walk up the front, and if there's a opposing party, they'll do the same thing. And of course, there's a certain side you sit on, depending on if you're playing for the defendant or the people. And you stand there and then you announce your appearances. And you say, Steve Leto, on behalf of my client who's standing right here, they'll do the same thing on that side. And then whatever business we have before the court, we will discuss it with the court. Other side will discuss it with the court. The court might ask us questions. We go around like that for a little while. And then if there's a ruling to be made, the judge will make a ruling. If there's not a ruling to be made, like, for instance, if it's a scheduling conference or something like that, the judge will then say, you know, here's, here's, here's what we've concluded with this matter. And then the judge will indicate that we're done, such as call the next matter or thank you, thank you, uh, next case. But the judge will indicate that something is done. It's finished. It's over. And so for an attorney to be talking to the judge While the matter is still pending and there's no resolution, to turn around and walk out of the courtroom would be extremely rude. So the idea that you're at home and you can press a button and hang up the phone call, it's a virtual way of walking out the door. And that's a problem. And so if she had been in a courtroom in front of that judge and it had the exchange that they had, If she had ended it by turning around and walking out of the courtroom, she would have been found in contempt. Now, I'm not saying it's the crime of the century. Uh, Time in jail is probably a bit too much, but it's probably well advised for her to study courtroom etiquette. And this coronavirus has been going on for some time now. And we are approaching, approaching one year since the courts have been shut down. People are going stir crazy. And although people are getting used to the Zoom hearings, it's, it's, it's still a problem. And we're still hearing all kinds of things about people who are doing hearings at home. And, you know, kids walk through the background, dog shoes on the computer, whatever it is. Weird stuff happens. And I think judges will tolerate a certain amount of that. But it's the attitude of saying, no, nope, I'm out of here, click and hanging up on the court <laughs> is a problem. So... Again, in a phone interview, the attorney said that she will challenge the punishment, citing the judge's rudeness and disrespect for an off-the-cuff remark. Now, if the judge had been rude, that will be there on the record also. If she was disrespectful, that'll be in the record. But the -the off-the-cuff remark was on the record. So um, as for that fine, straight cash, homie, (laughs) the attorney texted, bottom line, don't disrespect me and try to humiliate me in front of my client and other professionals, then think I'm going to sit there and take it whether you got on a robe or not. I'm a person just like her. 
I'm not her child, nor do I work for her. Get respect, and I give respect, period. And apparently that was a text that she sent that the news saw. I'm not sure it was sent to the news, doesn't say. But that, of course, is also a problem. And that text right there might come back to haunt her. Because the idea that you only have to respect the court if the court respects you first, um, it's actually a situation of mutual respect. And so I walk into a courtroom as respectfully as I can. I appear in front of the judge as respectfully as I can. And I'm always conscious of several things, one of which is I'm a professional. And I've taken an oath to do my profession well and not bring disrespect to it. But also, I have a career at this. So I'm in front of judges over and over and over again. I've been in front of some judges many times. Judges know me. They know who I am. They recognize me. And so when I appear in front of a judge, and the judge looks up and smiles, hey, Mr. Leto, how are you? I appreciate that because I understand that there is some goodwill between me and the court. And the problem is that you think you start from a position of no respect, but they've got to respect you first, and then you're going to respect the court. That's wrong. That's absolutely wrong. And I've mentioned before that the worst judge on earth was a judge in Brighton who wound up going to jail for some things she did. And um, she was bad. And I appeared before her a couple times. And I've mentioned that she was extremely disrespectful to anybody in a courtroom. Didn't matter if you were a plaintiff, a defendant, an attorney. Uh, you could be in the gallery. She might, what are you doing here? I saw her do that. And I've had people say, Steve, why, why would you tolerate that? Why would you tolerate that? Well, what's your choice? Okay. The choice is that you can go in there and be as respectful as you can and understand that everything is being videotaped. If she's disrespectful to you and later on you decide to do something about it, you can pull the tapes, get the tapes and do something about it, which by the way, people did. They did. And there were people who had experiences much worse than mine who did actually complain. But the problem I had, and many attorneys had this, is my client was sitting next to me at that hearing. And we had a very good case. And she was beating up the other side also. Now, if I had decided to be the one who challenged the judge that day in court, there's a very good chance that she'd take it out on us, my client, and I. Okay? Now, if it was just me on a personal matter, and I was in front of her and she did that, it would be a different case. I don't know what I would have done, but it depends on how rude she was and what the situation was. But my number one motivation when I'm in court is to take care of my client. And so I had a lot of people in the comments to one of my videos about that say, but Steve, you, you know, you should have done this. You should have done, you should have stood up for yourself. You should, you know, you, you, you shouldn't let her do that to you. It's my job. That's my job. My job is to go into court and get my client the best result we can. And by the way, we got a great result in that case. We got a great result in that case. And so when I looked back on it, I said, you know something? I put up with a bunch of nonsense to get there, but where we got was where we wanted to go. So your number one job as an attorney is to do the best you can for your client. So backing up to this attorney who's representing her client and they're supposedly putting a plea deal on the record. And then she says, but my client's mentally ill. And her client goes, no, I'm not. Um, there's problems before they even started that Zoom call that that attorney should have figured out. So the idea where she says things like, mark my words, if you take adverse action against me, you better be sure about it. Um, <sighs> I'm, I'm, you know... I find that kind of language shocking from an attorney speaking to a judge. She also said, I will attempt to hold you civilly or however responsible that I can. And that's my word. I will attempt to hold you civilly or however responsible. Um, I don't know if this attorney knows the law very well in Kentucky, but I suspect the judge does. The judge is looking at that going, what are you talking about? Huh? <laughs> so it's a weird case. Um, I've seen strange things in courtrooms. Uh, not something quite like that, but the reporting does say that the courtroom gasped upon hearing it. And again, 
eh, is hang up the call. Uh, yeah, you don't do that. Remember, you are in a courtroom when there's a judge talking to you. And so if you are sitting at home and you're doing it through a Zoom, you're still in a courtroom and you've got to keep that mindset. So it'll be interesting to see what happens. I don't know if they'll follow up on this or not, but if they do, I will stay on top of it. Chad Mills wrote the story for WDRB.com and Nathan sent it to me. Judge charges attorney with contempt after comment that made courtroom gasp. <laughs> Questions, comments, put them below. Others will talk to you later. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching Lato's Law. Now, let's proceed in an orderly fashion.